Okay, so let's talk a little more about uh, flash loans. Uh, you can tell that I'm very interested in the flash loans because we've covered them all already once, but I want to talk about them uh, again. It's such an ingenious idea. So DYDX, as I mentioned, has got free flash loans. Um, so it kind of makes sense that within this particular space, if there's no particular cost, then the price is basically driven to zero. So this is, it is like the theoretical world of perfect competition in economics. In your, in your economics course, your basic economics course, we talk about the, the conditions whereby uh, you know, supply will equal demand and there's no monopoly power and, and things like that. Um, this is that situation and the cost is driven uh, to zero. So the lending rates um, are basically usually defined by the riskiness of the actual loan and the duration. So a longer duration loan usually has a higher rate because there's a longer period for a bad event to actually happen. So your money's locked up a longer, so you should have a higher uh, rate of return. So with the flash loan, as we talked about uh, earlier, this is something that happens very quickly. So it, it's within a, a transaction. There's really no delay. It's all within a transaction. There's multiple steps in a transaction. There's a loan that's taken out at the beginning and then it's paid, at, paid back at the end. So it's instantaneous. There's no duration. There's no, uh, there's no credit risk. If there's anything that goes wrong, um, this is an atomic uh, transaction and we revert to the original uh, state. So we've been through uh, things like this and, uh, and this, is, uh, this is, again, a very uh, innovative uh, idea. So let's talk about uh, the use of a flash loan. And one of the main uses is arbitrage. So um, arbitrage is in many different forms. It might be prices that are different on different exchanges. It might be uh, lending and borrowing rates that differ between different um, protocols. There's many different ways. And, and arbitrage is something that is profitable for the arbitrageur, but arbitrage also plays an important role in the financial system in that it drives prices to where they should be. So if the price is too high somewhere compared to somewhere else, then arbitrage will equalize those prices. And that's a good thing because the people buying at the price that was too high, well, they're not getting a very good deal. They're getting uh, a price that's inflated. So these flash loans are important within this world of arbitrage. The difference, of course, is that when we think of arbitrage, we think of hedge funds or high net worth uh, investors. In this world, it doesn't matter who you are because the flash loan doesn't require collateral. Okay, so in traditional finance, you need to have the collateral to do the actual borrowing. So uh, for an arbitrage opportunity, it's restricted to the wealthiest and they make the money off of that. It's not available to the average person. So I talk about financial democracy a lot in this learning experience. Well, this is just uh, an example. So uh, we've talked about flash loans with Ave um, and with Ave, we had an example of refinancing a loan. So in, in the Ave example of the flash loan was a, a very nice example that you're locked into a rate for a loan, but then you see the possibility of having the same loan at a much lower rate. 
And we went through the two different possibilities. One would be just to, to pay back the original loan, take out a new loan. And the other possibility was to use a flash loan and do everything in one transaction and effectively refinance your loan from a higher rate to a lower rate. So, and again, I want you to think of the bigger picture here, that if enough people are doing that, then the rates tend to equalize. And then that means that everybody gets a fair deal. So again, arbitrage, a uh, very uh, important here. So I want to use um, flash loans in a different type of example uh, for dy dx. Uh, and that is uh, an example that capitalizes upon the prices being different on different exchanges. Okay, so the previous example with Ave was refinancing a loan, which is kind of an arbitrage uh, situation. We want to get the lowest possible rate. Now we're actually going to look at a situation where we've got two different prices and we want to capitalize uh, upon that. Okay, so uh, we'll start things off. Um, we've got an exchange rate for a thousand die uh, for ETH on Uniswap is six ETH um, for a thousand die. Okay, so that that's just what we observe on Uniswap. Um, now, suppose on DYDX, uh, we've got uh, a spot price of 5 ETH for 1,000 DAI. Okay, so uh, notice that the ETH are much more expensive on DYDX. Okay, so again, how is it more expensive? Well, I've got 1,000 DAI, which is $1,000. So on DYDX, that 1,000 buys me 5 ETH. But on Uniswap, I can get 6. So, so uh, basically, it's more expensive on DYDX. So let's kind of go through uh, the mechanics of how we can actually uh, make this work. So I've got a diagram for this, but let me just say it uh, first. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a flash loan for a thousand die. We're going to exchange it on Uniswap for six uh, ETH. We're going to use five of the six to um, to trade for a thousand die on DYDX. We're going to repay the flash loan with a thousand die, and then we got a profit of one ETH. Okay, so all of this in a single transaction, and let's go through uh, the diagram and, and the steps so you can see uh, what's happening. So again, we've got uh, two different exchanges. We've got Uniswap, we've got uh, DYDX. The price of ETH is different. Uniswap, it is, um, it is cheaper. So 1,000 die get you six uh, ETH, and on DYDX, it uh, is five ETH for 1,000. So uh, the first thing you do is to take out uh, a free flash loan for a thousand DAI. The next thing we're going to use um, those thousand DAI to purchase um, the ETH on the cheaper exchange, uh, Uniswap. So when we exchange the thousand DAI, we're going to get six ETH. That's step number three. And then we're going to take five of the six to settle the loan, the flash loan with DYDX, and the profit we've got is one ETH. Okay, so again, in one transaction. Now, of, of course, this is a, a stylized example here with a very large uh, price difference. Uh, and also, it's a very small transaction using only $1,000. I'm going to show you uh, some situations uh, in the fourth course on DeFi risks uh, where a loan is taken out, again, with no collateral for $200 million to do a complex arbitrage like this. And we'll see flash loans all over the place. Okay, so, so again, this is uh, quite a, a powerful uh, idea. 
So um, the YDX uh, just recently, uh, on August 3rd, uh, 2021, announced their governance token. So we've talked about governance in terms of DAI, MakerDAO, which is their maker token. We've talked about the COMP, a COMP token for Compound, Uni, and now uh, DYDX has, uh, has just launched their token, which is also called DYDX, but all uh, in, uh, in capitals. And uh, there's considerable detail on their website, but this was their next step to become fully uh, decentralized. And it's interesting in particular that um, this is focused on the layer two uh, protocol where much of the action is happening uh, with DYDX. Uh, so uh, again, I just want to step back a little bit to tell you how this usually works, that um, a protocol is launched and it has aspirations to be decentralized, fully decentralized. But when it's launched, it isn't. That the developers um, retain a lot of control over what's actually happening. And this is useful because there's often a lot of fine tuning that has to happen. But it's also a risk because if the developers are nefarious, they could potentially take advantage of those that are participating in the uh, protocol. But often it's the case that there is an aspiration to be uh, fully decentralized. And that aspiration is realized, um, you know, not all the time, um, but for the leading protocols that we're talking about at least, uh, this is very important. And recently, uh, DYDX has uh, launched their governance token. And remember, again, we've got these different types of tokens, right? So the equity token, uh, like the C token or the Y token we just talked about, uh, those represent a share of a liquidity uh, pool. But we've got utility tokens like stable coins. Um, and the governance token is, is something different in that the governance actually votes on changes in, in the protocol. So that might be uh, major changes, it might be minor changes of, of parameters, but uh, that is the mechanism whereby uh, things can change.